Surgery is an operation to modify behavior by destroying brain cells. It's one of the most controversial forms of surgery. It's used most frequently to try to cure severe depression. There are those who believe it's been used too frequently. People do get to... Psychosurgery developed from animal experiments in the United States. The results encouraged surgeons to try these new techniques on humans, and by 1948, leucotomies, literally to cut white brain matter, were commonplace. Eric Turner learned his trade from this work with animals in America, and he and the patients themselves. The findings necessarily are largely anecdotal as he charts his professional success. In the first few years, we were very, very strict. One of the early leucotomes, and I modified it, and the little um, blade could be made to rotate. But uh, although this was quite a reasonably effective and accurate method, it uh, was dangerous if um, blood vessels were in the way. judgment. The need for a check on psychosurgery is supported by the 90... The brain, which is uh, our, our, our organ of our humanity, our mental functioning, all that makes us human, we're talking about it as the target of the surgeon's knife or his laser beam. amount has been published but the quality is truly dreadful 90 percent of what is published is worthless uh, it's insufficient it's anecdotal and it wouldn't qualify for publication in the average scientific journal there has never discovered in Italy in 1938 by Professor Ugo Celletti. After experimenting on pigs in the Rome slaughterhouse, Celletti took the bold step of experimenting on a patient. The first thing in the early days was a distressing business. In this film, taken in the 1950s, ECT is being given without anaesthetic or drugs to relax the muscles. The convulsion under these conditions could be very violent, and broken teeth and spinal fractures were not uncommon. This is the image of ECT that has lingered on and is perhaps responsible for present-day misgivings about the treatment. Uh, I think outside the profession there is um, a rather irrational uh, gut feeling that ECT somehow represents an, uh, a terrible assault on the patient, that passing electricity through people's heads is particularly wicked. Um, for some reason, passing electricity through other parts of the body, as, as happens frequently, for example, in physiotherapy, isn't regarded as wicked, but passing electricity through the head is. Um, I think it's the connotations of words like electric and shock. Uh, and so there is uh, this kind of uh, irrational um, opposition to it. Inside the profession, there is opposition to it also of this kind. There are, um, and you may be aware of the joke, about a psychiatrist being a doctor who's afraid of blood. Uh, there are a number of doctors in psychiatry who have genuinely, deeply held revulsion to about anything of this kind. 
today and is ECT twice a week for three weeks, so this can vary widely. The patient is given a fast-acting general anaesthetic. No scale muscle spasm. This relaxant drug also paralyzes the breathing muscles, so the anaesthetist gives the patient oxygen before and after the shock is administered. A rubber gag is put between the teeth to stop the patient biting her tongue and then the electrodes are placed on the head. And feet. ECT is inhumane or barbaric. It's given... To, uh, to object if ECT is used um, on a pretty automatic basis. I mean, there, there are, unfortunately, um, a number of hospitals, uh, even in this country, uh, which seem to run on the principle if, if it moves, give it drugs, and if it stands still, give it ECT. Uh, I would like to think that was just a very, a very bad and unpleasant joke, but I, I'm afraid it's not. myself conducted um, uh, experiments with ECT and in a couple of cases I have uh, given, I have told patients who wanted ECT, uh, perhaps they'd had it before and it worked and they felt that they really needed ECT. I disagreed, I didn't feel they needed it. So in a couple of cases I have told them that they were going to have ECT and as far as they're concerned they've had it. Uh, but all I did was to take them down to the, um, the, the treatment room. They had their anaesthetic um, and they were allowed to wake up. And uh, a very satisfactory recovery occurred in these cases. Now that, of course, doesn't prove anything, but it, it, it does strongly suggest that there are powerful, non-specific, if you like, magical effects, because it is such a dramatic treatment, uh, that in some cases, perhaps in many cases, um, this accounts for uh, the dramatic improvement, which, which can certainly happen, but the same sort of thing. Patients are divided at random into two groups. The patients in both groups are given the general anaesthetic and the muscle relaxant drug, as small as possible. But only the patients from one group will be given the electric in the dark too. He will have to examine patients after their course of treatment and decide which of them has got better without... This is called a double-blind controlled trial and it's reckoned to be the only way of sorting out whether or not a treatment really does... and the tablets continued to arrive. Since the early days, benzodiazepines have emerged at the rate of two or three a year, other companies joining the Roche originals. 
Today the family has grown to 15. There is no medical need for 15 different preparations. 